Hello, and thank you for joining me again. Uh, we just got through uh, a weekend uh, where we had to turn the clocks ahead. We talked about this, I believe, back in October, and I told you that we fall back in the fall and we spring forward in the spring. But one thing that I've never been able to figure out, maybe you can uh, help me this time and tell me when does daylight savings begin and daylight savings ends. Uh, I'm assuming daylight savings ends when we, when we move the clocks ahead an hour, but I'm not sure. Uh, but that's not really what I want to talk about. And I don't want to spend as much time on uh, the uh, time change as I did last time. What I usually talk about is what I think about any given subject. Uh, but from time to time, I also like to share with you the things that interest me. Not necessarily what I think, but what I like. And um, I have decided to discuss a subject that I think most of us can relate to, and that is television what we like to watch. And, um, you know, I grew up with TV. I think a lot of us did. Um, my mom tells me my father called it the, the poor man's entertainment. This doesn't cost anything to watch. And, um, you know, when I was growing up, you know, all I knew was over-the-air television. Now, I've talked about cord cutting um, over and over again. Uh, I think more last year than this year. And, um, you know, over-the-air an antennas is, is making a comeback. And, uh, but when I grew up, that's all we knew. And, uh, you know, now there's cable, there's satellite, there's all kinds of streaming services such as Hulu and YouTube Red and Sling and um, Netflix is the big one. And um, I think it's great that there's so many options, but there also is a downside to that. You know, when I grew up, uh, the shows that I watched was the shows that everybody was watching because there were no other options. You know, uh, in school we can get together and talk about what was on Fox last night or NBC or CBS or ABC because that's all there was. You know, and um, when I was little, I was watching TV shows from, you know, the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And um, just a couple of years ago, I became really interested, and I now fancy myself as being somewhat of a, of a historian on television. And um, uh, I did a little research and um, found out a couple of interesting things about uh, television. And uh, I became curious because um, I had always watched uh, TV shows from, you know, the 50s through the 70s. And I was thinking, okay, well, how come I've never seen any shows from the 40s or earlier? So I started researching this. Um, you know, television has been a part of most of our lives, if not all of our lives. So we just assumed it's always been there. Uh, but it's not as old as you would think. Uh, there's a lot of TV shows in the 50s, um, but not a lot that you ever can see on TV um, or even available on DVD uh, from the 40s. And I looked into it, and what I learned was during the World War, during World War II, there was a break, and there wasn't any uh, new shows being made. And um, the 40s is really the beginning of a lot of primetime television. Until the 40s, um, television is pretty experimental. Um, you could probably find on YouTube um, a TV broadcast going back to probably the end of the 30s, uh, which is like a silent broadcast. I don't even think you can hear any audio, and the quality is really bad. Um, but there really wasn't, um, for like I said, because of the war, there was there was a break, and television was becoming popular around in the 40s, and that was a bit of a setback. But after the war, around 47 or 48, 49, television.
television went back into production. And, um, but still, it's really hard to find anything from that era that we could watch now. Um, the reason being, and I'll explain that in a moment, but before I even go into that, let me tell you that uh, in the beginning, uh, there was NBC. And the NBC is probably the oldest um, network. And... Um, followed by CBS and then eventually ABC. And that's the way it was up until 80s when Fox came along. And there's one forgotten network, one network that never made it, and that was the Dumont Network, uh, which probably got its start in the 40s and uh, broadcasted its last show, I believe, probably in 1957. And I think that was like a wrestling match. And um, Dumont was actually a brand of television. And I think that's why television shows were really created, was because television sets were being made, but there was nothing to watch. So Dumont uh, was a man who was selling TV sets, and then he you know, started creating content for people to watch. And um, that's when primetime began, and primetime ran from like between 7 and 11, and over the years it got pushed ahead to like 8 o'clock. But I, I believe it started around 7.30. And um, there wasn't like the sitcoms that we watch today, there really wasn't much of that. Um, it was mostly variety shows, game shows, um, and um, uh, sports telecasts. That's really all there was. And news shows came a little while later and they were like 15 minute shows. They weren't even a full half hour show. So um, that's the beginning of television. Um, there's a lot that I'm forgetting. In fact, I was just going to tell you about something else about the beginning of television. I postponed it and now I've forgotten. But I'll try to come back to it. My mind is racing. There's a lot that I want to say on the subject of television. Um, I don't know if this is what I forgot, but I'll insert it here. Another reason why there isn't a lot that exists from the 40s that we could watch online is because back in television's infancy, um, everything was done live. You know, um, eventually later in the 90s, and I think um, the TV show The Nanny was notorious for doing this, bloopers would be like, be funny to watch. And they even made a TV show about bloopers, um, where they would compile different TV shows and, and lines that were blown and we'd get a laugh out of it. But actually The Nanny was a show that for a season or so, I don't know how long they did this, they would show all the, um, all the mistakes that were made at the end. And some of them were so dull and boring and some of them just seemed staged but people could get a laugh out of those. But uh, back in the very beginning, um, you know, there were no, there were few rehearsals, and there nothing was re nothing was recorded where you could edit things out. Um, things were done live, and the only recordings that exist were made for the purposes of rebroadcasting on the West Coast because um, television, I think started out really in um, New York before it moved to Hollywood, and that was as a result of Desi Lu Studios, you know, um, Desi Arnaz and um, Lucille Ball of the I Love Lucy show. They were the ones that I think ended up uh, doing the show out in California, and that kind of led to everything eventually being done there. Um, the I Love Lucy show from the 50s was a pretty pioneering show. But um, things were originally done live here on the East Coast. And it would be shown, for example, 9 o'clock in the evening. Um, and those in the Central Time Zone would see it at 8 o'clock. Well, we didn't want a show broadcasting at 9 o'clock live. 
to be seen in California at 6 o'clock because of the three-hour time difference. So I think what they did was um, they, they recorded it on what were called kinescopes, and then it would be rebroadcast at um, 8 o'clock Mountain Time, uh, 9 o'clock Central Time. And um, eventually, you know, it, it was an expensive process, and eventually they would tape over, tape over these, these reels or whatever they were uh, to make room for new recordings. So nothing, unfortunately, was saved. A lot of content from back then was unfortunately destroyed, and there's a lot of series that aired in the 40s, 50s, and even as late as the 60s, where uh, that are that are not complete series. There's um, either fragments or entire episodes at times that are missing. Um, so that's a little uh, trip down memory lane. But you know, I know how we all like lists, and this is what I really wanted to get to. And maybe I'll come back to the history of TV some more. But I wanted to tell you about the TV set shows that I liked. Um, I always liked TV Guide. In fact, there's like pictures of me as a kid, um, like paging through the TV Guide. Um, and I used to love, like the fall preview of all the new shows. Uh, I used to buy those uh, TV Guide specials. Who knows if, if TV Guide's even uh, published anymore? I don't know. I don't see them in the store supermarket checkouts anymore like I used to. Maybe they're still there and I just don't notice them because now we have like, um, apps. I use an app um, to, you know, know what's 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 going to uh, be on the air. But in the '70s, um, growing up, I remember me and my brother always used to watch The Honeymooners and The Odd Couple on uh, WPIX Channel 11 in New York. Um, I believe The Odd Couple was at 11, and The Honeymooners was on at 11:30. And those were the shows I would watch, and Star Trek, and a whole bunch of other shows. And um, I remember in the mid 80s, probably in 86, I actually uh, made my own little um, uh, TV guide where I wrote down all the TV shows and what days they should be on and what times they should be on. Um, I don't know, I've always been a fan of lists and stuff, and that sort of thing. And um, I had some fun with that. Um, but uh, the TV shows that um, that I liked from the 50s are as follows. It's a very short list, all right? Of course, I Love Lucy. That's pretty universal. Everybody likes that. That's gotta be on everybody's list. Um, great show. Um, my favorite character is probably Ethel Mertz, uh, followed by Lucy, and then Ricky. And I never liked um, uh, Kenny, William Frawley to play Fred. That man was way too old for that part never liked him in that show. Um, that, his appearance ruined the show for me. Uh, but it was still a great show, lots of fun. If you've never seen it, you must. Um, another great show is The Honeymooners. They called it the, the, the classic 39. Uh, but it was actually born from a sketch that appeared on the Cavalcade of Stars, which originally was on the Dumont Network. And then eventually, uh, went on to CBS as the Jackie Gleason show. Jackie, Jackie Gleason played Ralph Cramden on The Honeymooners, and it ran for um, one season, a full season of 39 episodes, and I never really understood why the show didn't continue. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a hysterical show, um, and a lot of shows have been modeled uh, after it. Um, I like it better than I Love Lucy, but, uh, you know, obviously there isn't nearly as many episodes. I Love Lucy ran for five years. I Love Lucy kind of invented the reruns. Um, and I think probably due to I Love Lucy, a lot of content started uh, to be preserved um, because of I Love Lucy. But um, The Honeymooners has a lot of sketches, um, some of them lost, uh, but there's probably around 100 sketches and those are available on DVD and currently are being broadcast on uh, the Decades Network. Um, another show that I liked growing up, but not so much now, is Alfred Hitchcock Presents. 
Um, that was an anthology series. So it was different, a different cast, different storylines uh, every week. And, um, you know, some of them are spine tinglers. They're kind of, some of them pretty, pretty scary, very intriguing. But um, I've tried to watch them as an adult, and I don't know. You would think that as an adult I would get more out of it, but I, I don't. Some of, the, some of the episodes are really good, some of them are not. Another anthology series um, that started in 1959, but it was basically a 60s show, was The Twilight Zone. Excellent, excellent show. And um, some more 60s shows that I liked, uh, of course, The Lucy Show. Um, if you like I Love Lucy, of course you're going to like The Lucy Show, which um, starred Lucille Ball. But by then, her and Desi Arnaz, who were Lucy and Ricky Riccardi on I Love Lucy, who were married on the show and in real life, had divorced. So she did that show on her own. I think um, Desi Arnaz worked behind the scenes on maybe the first season or two. And um, I never watched the show growing up, but um, I saw the DVD on like, for, like in a bargain bin at Walmart for a buck. And it had like nine episodes. So I checked it out, and it was a pretty good show. And um, other 60s shows that I liked growing up, I loved Flipper, um, about um, these two little boys and their dad, and they live in the Keys. Um, I forget the name of the key that they live in. It's fictitious. And um, they have a pet dolphin. There's a lot of water scenes. It's in color. Um, great show to watch as a kid. As an adult, it's just eye candy, just staring there watching the waves and the ocean and, and yeah, it, I can't get into it like I did as a kid. Another show from the 60s that I really liked was Hazel. And I've watched that a couple of times on Over the Air TV, now that I've gone back to Over the Air TV, what they run, what they broadcast is mostly old shows. And um, Hazel's a cute show. Um, a show that I discovered in October of last year started broadcasting, I believe for the first time on the network, net, Decades Network, is Dark Shadows. Um, and as soon as I wrap up here, I'm going to race to my room to watch that. It's on at midnight, and um, it's a goth soap opera from the 60s. started broadcasting in, I believe, 1966 um, and in black and white. Uh, they're now broadcasting the color episodes, and um, they uh, it ran for six years for like 1,225 episodes. Only one is lost. Uh, they have the audio to it, but not the video. Um, great show. I wish I could talk more about it, but I got to get through this stuff. So let me just race through the 70s. There's a lot of shows I liked in the 70s. 70s. All in the Family. Mary Tyler Moore. The Odd Couple. Good Times. The first and second season, and somewhat the third season after that, the show went downhill. Without John Amos, the show suffered. And then um, Esther Roll left the show, and uh, Jeanette Dubois, or Jeannet Dubois, took over in the lead role. And she was, uh, she tried way too hard to be sassy, and it got really annoying. Um, and Esther Roll came back, I believe, in the fifth season. Or in the sixth season, um, the fifth season was Jeanette Dubois by her, as the lead role. Um, uh, Esther Roll came back in the sixth season, but um, they pulled the plug on the show. Just Sears went, just, just the, the ratings just tanked. Um, another great show, Soap Only Ran Four Seasons, Wish It Were More. It's a, a parody of soap operas. It is a hoot. Um, Another feel-good show, this is a drama, I don't have a lot of dramas on my list of shows I like, Little House on the Prairie. That is the show that is so much fun to make fun of. And you could also, if you're in a serious mood, take it seriously and it's fun. Um, you know, uh, another great show from the 70s, What's Happening? Laverne and Shirley, Sanford and Son. Sanford and Son suffered at times, it wasn't funny at times, but whenever Red Fox and uh, LaWanda Page did shows together. Wow, it was fireworks. Um, the way they bickered back and forth was hilarious. Another thing about Sanford and Son is you'll notice a lot of the older actors that appeared in the series often wore suits, and I always wondered why that was. And I think that's kind of a continuation of what we saw a lot in the 50s and 60s. All the men wore suits, all the women wore dresses, everybody just was so elegant. and. Um, and also, 
everyone articulated themselves so well. But beginning in the 70s, uh, I think what shows like All in the Family, um, they got away from the idealistic light that we saw on t TV and they got very urban and real broad and real and started dealing with more um, uh, dark subjects and uh, people just started being more like the people you see in real life. Um, kind of like that, it kind of reflected what life was really like, but um, I think the the way people spoke on TV just became really ghetto. And when you watch these old shows from the 60s, you're like, wow. I mean, I, 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 it gives me a lift. It just, it, it just raises the bar for me. Um, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, other good shows from the 70s, Maud. Um, and, that, and that, Good Times, All in the Family, all Norman Lear shows, which I really liked. Um, now, for the 80s, The Golden Girls, that has mass appeal uh, to this day. Um, that show is treated like its first run, um, it seems. Uh, another good show is The Dukes of Hazzard, Mama's Family. The Jeffersons, which you would associate with the 70s because it started in 75, but it ran through until 85. It ran for 11 seasons. And I think more shows aired in the 80s than they did in the 70s. Um, the first season, was old, first season was only 13 episodes. So I kind of think of it as an 80s show. Um, Alice um, also started in the 70s, um, aired more episodes probably in the 80s, as did Three's Company, which also started in the 70s. Um, Give Me a Break, strictly an 80s show. Really like that. Archie Bunker's Place, which was a continuation of All in the Family. Um, I have a talk show on the list, the Bort Downey Jr. show. Look him up on uh, YouTube. It, it was a talk show, but this guy was really in your face. And um, the show started off with like a picture of a big mouth, and it said the Bort Downey Jr. show. He used to have like a humongous ashtray. Uh, nearby, like a silver bowl. And he was always smoking and calling the, the women on the show bitches, and everybody was always hooting and hollering in the audience, and he always was wearing red socks. This guy was a character. Um, funny, fun show to watch, um, but only aired for like two or three years. Um, also, Friday the 13th, that only lasted two or three years, but there was, it, was, it was based, it was, it, the name is taken from the movie series, but it has nothing to do with the movie series. It lasted for about 80 shows over three or four years, but it got pulled. It got, you know, back in the 80s, there was, you know, um, a lot of complaints from parents um, over the content because some blood was shown in the shows. I don't know. I don't know. It's probably more than that. Um, so let me tell you about the 90s. Melrose Place really got into that show. That was a nighttime um Nighttime soap opera in prime time. Great show. Um, lasted from like 92 to 99. Married with Children. Started in the 80s, continued through the 90s, aired more episodes, I believe, in the 90s, on for 11 seasons. Unsolved Mysteries was probably the first show I ever liked that was kind of one of those true, true crime series, kind of classifies as that. Uh, hosted by uh, Robert Stack. Wasn't good after the man uh, stopped hosting the show. Um, a legal drama, The Practice, started in, I believe, 96, 97, um, aired half of its shows, I think, in the 90s and half of it in the 2000s. The Practice was a great show. Um, I haven't seen the entire series, but I saw enough to know that I like it. Absolutely Fabulous was an absolutely fabulous show. That is the only, well, no, it's one of two BBC shows. It's a, it's a British um, sitcom that I really liked. And also, I mentioned the show The Nanny earlier. That was a show that I also liked that ran for six seasons, starring Fran Drescher. Um, in the 2000s, Dexter, ooh, great show. That was pro that's probably the first show from cable uh, to make my list that was on HBO. And another one is Sex in the City. I believe that was also on HBO. Uh, that was, no, I think that was Showtime. I'm not sure. Or maybe Dexter was Showtime. Um, Kings of Queens started in 97. Um, I only started watching that maybe four or five years ago. Uh, great show. And um, Big Brother, uh, I watched that for a while. 
And in uh, since 2010, there's not a lot of shows. Um, Bates Motel, I watched three of the five seasons. Um, that, I believe, was on uh, A&E. Uh, great show. Downton Abbey, um, sh uh, shows on Masterpiece Theater here on PBS, but it is a BBC show, ran for six series, as they call them. They don't call them series in the UK. Um, I haven't watched a lot of Orange is the New Black, but another great show I highly recommend. Um, and a new show that just started uh, in September of last year. I've watched a few episodes. It isn't a great show, but I kind of like it. Um, I recommend it's called God Friended Me. And the, the, the name alone piqued my interest. And, um, but that's all I'm going to say about TV. Um, I knew this was going to take a long time. I could probably talk about it for a while longer. Uh, but I got to wrap things up. Let me know sh what shows you'd like. Uh, what, what shows you like? I'm interested. Um, I uh, thank you for watching and listening, and um, I hope you agree with uh, my selections in terms of some of the greatest shows through the decades. Um, and there's two more from the '60s that I wouldn't say I'm a fan of, but I watch from time to time. That is uh, the Monsters and the Adams Family. Those are great shows. Um, they're kind of fun. Um, there's a bunch that I don't like either, but maybe we'll talk about that another time. Thanks again for your time. Have a good night. Back when I was a kid, many TV channels were not 24 hours, and in New York, where I grew up, channels would sign off as early as midnight and as late as around 3 or 4 in the morning. The sign-off was, as you see here, it began with a national anthem, followed by color bars and snow. The color bars and snow had an audio track as well that I won't subject you to. Suffice it to say that it was nothing but irritating noise. <laughs>